Welcome to the Autism Empowerment Podcast, your source for acceptance, enrichment, inspiration, and empowerment in autistic and autism communities worldwide. Wherever you identify in your autism or autistic journey, Autism Empowerment is here to meet you along the way. We're an autistic-led podcast, 501c3 nonprofit charity, and publisher of Spectrum Life magazine. In today's episode, we're answering important listener questions. What has been going on with Autism Empowerment in summer 2021? When is our next issue of Spectrum Life magazine? When is our 10th anniversary miniseries debuting? Let's get going. And we're back on the air. Hey there, Karen. Hi, John. It feels awesome to be back here in the studio with you. It's hard to believe it's already mid-August. Yikes, mid-August. I'm glad to be back in the studio with you too, but that means our kids are going to be back in school soon. That hopefully means we'll be back in the studio on a regular basis. More on that in a moment. First, let me greet our listeners. Hello, podcast friends. Thank you so much for joining us here today for the Autism Empowerment Podcast. My name is Karen Krejcia, and I'm the executive director and co-founder of Autism Empowerment. I'm also one of your regular hosts. I'm here with my husband, John Krejcia, who is our program's director and other co-founder. If you're a regular listener, this show format is a little different than the majority of our previous shows. We made a decision when we relaunched our Autism Empowerment podcast back in January 2021 to make sure that every few months or so, we would give our listeners insight into the inner workings of Autism Empowerment as a nonprofit organization. Our spring update was episode number 13, where we went over the status of all of our current programs. This will be our summer update. For now, I'm going to turn this over to John, who will be asking questions, sharing in the discussion, and helping monitor our time together. I'd be happy to do that. I guess first, I want to discuss a topic that's weighed heavily on our minds together and some of our listeners as well. What is going on with our organization and the Autism Empowerment Podcast? Yeah, that's it. Our last episode was episode 19, which was on June 14th, 2021, when we announced our upcoming 10th anniversary behind the scenes miniseries. We had expected to launch the series on July 12th. However, it's now mid-August. Yes, and no miniseries launched yet. Are we still planning to do this? Absolutely. This is something that is very important to me. It's important to us in the organization. In fact, you could say that because it was so important, that is why it was delayed. And it wasn't our intention for the delay. No. And honestly, I've been very sad about that. I've had to deal with a whole gamut of emotions. And I'm here today to apologize sincerely to our listeners and to also provide some insight. Part of the delay has had to do with my autistic neurology and challenges with wanting to get things with this series just right. What I mean by just right And for those of you who are autistic, you may relate with me on this, is sometimes you want things to be so, quote unquote, perfect, even though things can't necessarily be perfect, that you loop on something and overthink something so much that you end up getting stuck like a paralysis of analysis. And so I have been wanting so much to share with our listeners the meaning behind the pillars of our organization, accept, enrich, inspire, and empower, and really go behind the scenes with the meaning of how we were called to do the work that we aim to do, in addition to giving our listeners some great stories and insight from the work that we've been doing over the last 10 years. The more that I thought about how to put this series together, the more questions that kept coming up. And so I kept getting stuck in circular thinking and it got very difficult. So at one point, I just needed to take a break from it. Also, a big part of it had to do with the fact that I've been experiencing some mental health issues, including depression and autistic burnout, in addition to COVID long haul fatigue and compassion fatigue. I know this is a very vulnerable situation Do you feel comfortable talking about this? Yes and no. Most of our listeners who have either listened to our early shows or been subscribers to our magazine know that I became very ill with COVID last year, early on in March. So they may know a little bit of my backstory there. They may not know so much about autistic burnout, that type of mental exhaustion and depression. So making myself 
vulnerable for people who are listening, people who I know personally, and of course, those who I don't know, but making myself vulnerable for people in this world to potentially make fun of or exploit or somehow take advantage of is not really my ideal way to spend a time here in the booth. I don't think it would be anybody's. <laughs> it, uh... However, here's the thing. There are a lot of autistic and non-autistic listeners out there who I know are also struggling with mental health issues right now. This last year and a half has been so tough for so many people for so many different reasons. And I've come to learn that I'm not going to be able to authentically give of myself to the best of my abilities and giftings if I'm not also able at some point to admit that I need to take time to take care of myself. That's something that our listeners may be feeling too, but they're not sure how to do that. And sometimes people just need to have that break and to be able to say, I need help. Yes, and that's okay. We're going to be talking about the intricacies of autistic burnout, emotional fatigue, exhaustion, those kinds of things in separate shows as individual topics, because these are conditions that many autistic people experience, and it can get very difficult to recover from, particularly if one is also prone to anxiety and depression. But for now, I just ask that our listeners have compassion and that they look at us as people, not just as an organization, but that they look at us um, as people and forgive us for not being back on the air sooner. And we truly do appreciate your grace. Absolutely. We definitely appreciate your grace. And so we'll come back to the podcast in our upcoming series in just a bit. First, though, let's give an update on where we are on our other programs and Spectrum Life magazine. Is that OK? Yeah, that sounds great. So during our last update in spring 2021, our support group, social clubs, and in-person gatherings were still shut down due to COVID-19. We had sent out a newsletter at that time saying we're looking at all of our programs and services, but we are hoping that by summer or fall, some of the programs would be coming back in some type of form and others wouldn't be coming back. Has anything changed since that time? That's a really good question, John. One of the most difficult decisions that we have had to make at Autism Empowerment is shutting down our in-person groups. Our community in Southwest Washington in the Portland metro area are tremendous people, and it hurt us to have to tell them that we couldn't be meeting in person for both our health and safety. At the time, this was March of 2020, we had two adult support groups. We had a parent support group. We had a tween and teen social club, an adult social club, and we had an Autism Serves Kids Care Club volunteerism program. These had all been meeting each month. We also had been doing sensory-friendly events throughout the Southwest Washington, Portland metro area, as well as different types of special events and exhibiting and celebrations, and then annual events like our annual summer picnic and our Gamerama. All of this went away, and with it, a lot of our ability to raise funds, too, and stay humanly connected in person. But we did our best to be able to stay connected online and through the ways that we could. What didn't go away was our passion to serve and our desire and our calling to help people. We just realized that we were going to need to do things in a different way and that we could use our giftings and strengths in a way that could still help people. It was just going to look differently than that in-person gathering. I guess to answer your question, our in-person groups and events are still shut down. And at this point in time, the only program that we're looking to bring back in person at some point, depending upon the way things are in our community, is the Autism Serves Kids Care Club. With the way the virus is in our region right now, as of mid-August 2021, that may not be until next year. We just really don't know, and it's very difficult to continue to say we'll see and make commitments and then let people down. So I know that this will disappoint and frustrate some people, but the health of autistic youth, adults, and families in our community, many 
of whom are immunocompromised is our priority. Especially with the Delta variant currently with COVID-19, with that unknown and other variants coming up, it's just really hard to predict anything almost. It's true. And I recognize that there are groups and there are places out there that are meeting and are gathering. And that's okay if people want to plug into those things. We try to promote them and share different types of things that people are doing. But we just don't have the capacity to do that ourselves. Are any of our groups currently online? Shasti runs the Autism We Embrace support group monthly through Zoom. And then our other groups, our autism support groups, have Facebook pages, including the Tween and Teen Social Club, where we invite and encourage members, people who had connected with the groups before, to go ahead and interact with each other and share resources. There are some people within those groups who still want to meet up with each other or connect through Discord or other types of meetings, and that's great. They can use the group to set up those connections privately. Now, NAMI has started an adult support group online as well, correct? Yes. So a couple months ago, one of the people who had been attending our adult autism support group in Southwest Washington came to us and said that he knew that we weren't able to be meeting in person because the place that we had been using for meetings was closed to us. And he asked whether it would be okay. He was a volunteer through NAMI, and he asked if it would be okay to start a NAMI online support group through Zoom and then invite the people that were attending our adult support group in Southwest Washington. And we said, sure, we would be happy to do that and gave him the name of a couple people that had been co-facilitating at the time And now currently that group is meeting a couple times a month online and they're thinking about potentially meeting in person when it's safe. And those are the types of things where we want to be able to encourage and empower people who have an idea and want to do something and have the capacity or resources to be able to do so, to be able to do that and we can market it for them. And we'll go ahead and put the links and stuff for the NAMI meetup as well. Yes. But as far as all of the other meetups that are posted on the Facebook page, those aren't autism empowerment sponsored, correct? No, no. And it feels a little bit like we're bad guys when we say that because we cared so much about all of the people in the community that we were used to seeing on a regular basis, but it's really not our intent. And I think that if people know us, they would understand that. But I'd like to explain to people who might be new to our organization or kind of vaguely familiar with us, they may not realize that autism empowerment on a daily basis operates virtually. We don't have our own dedicated office or meeting space that others come to. In fact, right now, John, you and I are recording in what would be considered a home studio. We've been very fortunate in the past to partner with other nonprofit organizations who let us borrow their space And our primary location that we use to host gatherings at has been shut down to outside groups since March 2020, as they're classified as an assisted living facility and home for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Given the number of COVID cases in our county and region currently, we don't expect them to be opening up anytime soon to outside groups. And all of these decisions that were made about shutting particular programs down or redesigning them into a different fashion. Those were all done with the blessing of our board of directors and with their consent and advisement. Yes, absolutely. It's, again, a tough thing to be able to do, but I think that our listeners know that we've all had to be experiencing changes and shifts and programs and places shutting down and pivoting and adapting and all of those buzzy, jargony types of words. But We decided that for us, we do not want to go away. What we want to do instead is to have our key priority going forward to make sure that we're using our personal strengths and gifts to serve the autistic, autism, and disability communities by connecting people through where we can be strong, which is our multimedia content program. This includes our Autism Empowerment Podcast our publication Spectrum Life magazine, which is currently very strong and reaches throughout Washington and Oregon, 
and actually in a lot of places throughout the country now. It also includes our SpectrumLife.org blogs and other training and videos that we'll be releasing in the future. In fact, in some ways, the extra time that we have has now freed us up to be able to focus our energy on the things that are able to better help others. So you mentioned Spectrum Life magazine. What's going on with that? Well, we published our summer 2021 issue in June 2021. It's available for free on our website at www.spectrumlife.org. And we distribute it throughout Washington and Oregon. There's a place on the website you can go to pick up print copies. What was really neat about that issue is that it celebrated two milestones. It celebrated our fifth year of publishing the magazine as a nonprofit program of autism empowerment, and it also celebrated the 10th anniversary of autism empowerment as a nonprofit organization. What I really liked about that last issue was that actually on one of the articles that talked about Spectrum Life magazine, again, and it had a picture of all 18 covers of all 18 issues that were published. Yeah, that was all on one page. We have a really amazing graphic designer, Dave Bourne, and it was really pretty neat to be able to see all of those covers side by side and to know all of the people's stories that were within. There were so many amazing stories in there, so many great articles, so many people being helped. We were able, as an organization, to shine a light on the great work that so many people were doing for the autistic community and so many great things that autistic people were doing. And the neat thing is that all of those issues can be read on our website for free at the spectrumlife.org website. We have the electronic magazine style version, and we also have each of the articles as individual blog articles. Now, if someone wants to get the magazine shipped to them directly or a subscription to them directly at home, how can they do that? Yes, they can get that too. There is a subscribe link on the website And it's $20 per year, but that covers the cost of mailing for those issues. If you happen to live outside of the United States, we recommend that you probably read the electronic version or download. However, if you really did want one mailed to you, we could figure out a way to do that. And we also do have some back issues as well. Email us if you're interested in potentially having one of those. Now, I know we're currently working on the fall issue, which I'm excited that's coming out very shortly. So when is it coming out, Karen? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be out about a month from today. Yay. We're expected to go to press at the end of this month and start deliveries sometime in the middle of September 2021. So about a month or so from today, you will be out in the car delivering throughout Oregon and Washington. I sure will. With the spring and summer 2021 issues, we did a behind the scenes podcast for each of those particular issues. And I'm assuming we're going to be doing something similar to that that we did with episode 16 and 18, respectively. Yes. So episode 16 was a behind the scenes look at our spring Spring. 2021 issue. And episode 18 looked at the summer. summer. So we're going to be doing the same type of thing for the fall. What's neat about those behind the scenes episodes is we go over every article that's within the magazine, but we go behind the scenes and give a lot of different fun facts about what went into the article and a lot of things that we didn't have space for in the magazine. We try to give our listeners an opportunity to connect with the people that are involved with the magazine. And you know, my favorite part is? What is your favorite part? Fun facts. Yes. You you are a fun Fun fact fact type of guy, aren't you? Yes. (laughs) So yes, that episode that we'll be doing will be out in that mid-September time frame also. So before we go, I want to talk a little bit about some upcoming podcasts, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that sounds great. As we mentioned in the beginning of this show, we had originally planned for a behind-the-scenes 10 Years of Autism Empowerment five-part podcast miniseries that would come out in July and August. That would have started around July 12th. Well, we're still going to be putting that together. It's still being worked on. However, we have pushed the start date out to August 30th. And then after that, we're going to be doing our best to be on a weekly schedule after that, correct? Yes. When we first planned the podcast, 
we admittedly thought that we would be recording and publishing much more frequently. I think we thought, oh, two episodes a week, maybe three episodes a week. And then life happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then reality hit, right? Right. I have to give us credit for our enthusiasm and passion, but there is a lot of work that goes into the podcast, the magazine, the websites, and the other training that we do. And of course, then we have our own priorities with family, God. with our faith, yes. And so we had a real heart-to-heart -heart with ourselves, and we really needed to reassess and reprioritize what we've been called to do so that when we're here doing the podcast, we're doing the best possible show that we can. And we think that one new show each week is an excellent goal to strive for. It's something our listeners can look forward to in their schedule and for autistic and neurodivergent people like ourselves, John, having that show on our schedule as part of our routine will help us do our best work possible and produce a quality show that helps more people. Absolutely correct on that. We're really here to help and support, to encourage and inspire, to empower and embrace. And we recognize that not everyone is going to be able to relate to us at all times, but we hope that you know that our intentions are to positively serve and that these intentions are sincere, and we hope that you will open your mind and your hearts to us as we journey together on the road ahead. We are an acquired taste, are we not? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed we are, my dear. I love that. So that reminds me about what we're going to be doing on our next show called Double Back and Double Tech. Can we talk about that also? Yep. This show episode will be dedicated to all listeners who are struggling with insecurity, depression, anxiety, and loneliness. This is going to be near and dear to my heart because I'm going to be reading and talking about a poem that I was inspired to write for the summer 2021 issue of Spectrum Life magazine called Double Take. But before some of you tune out and think this is just a poetry reading or something that's woo-woo, <laughs> give me a chance to share with you the backstory. I've found that we can often relate to each other through storytelling and I will be sharing with you some of the ways that I have been able to move through burnout, stress, anxiety, loneliness, and depression into a healthier, more confident place where I know I'm loved and have strategies to use when the darkness tries again to cover me. And that will be our next show, correct? That will be our next show. And our listeners, I want you to know that you're loved. Oh, that's very sweet. I, I do love them as well. And that's what we're here for is to help serve them. I'm glad that we spent today catching up on all of the things that Autism Empowerment is doing and how we're moving forward. Before I turn this back over to you, Karen, I'd like to thank our audience for tuning in and know that you are loved. And thank you, Karen, and back to you. Thank you very much, John. Yes, the next show will be episode number 21. And then episode number 22 will start our behind the scenes of Autism Empowerment miniseries. So we've got a lot of great things coming up. And then interspersed with that miniseries, we'll have the Spectrum Life show. And we'll have some other good things and surprises for you. So final thoughts. Sometimes things don't go as intended or planned. We have all had to deal with a lot of that in the last year and a half. And good, bad, or indifferent... Sometimes we don't have a choice in what happens to us, but we do have a decision on how we can choose to react. At Autism Empowerment, we choose grace, patience, forgiveness, and kindness. We're all lifelong learners, and we all have the power within us to be ambassadors of autism acceptance, as well as ambassadors for acceptance of all abilities. We can all love one another. We hope you'll join us in our vision of building a more inclusive society where autistic youth adults and families are accepted, valued, respected, and have the opportunity to live awesome, meaningful lives. We recognize that autism is a journey for you. It's one for us as well, and we're going to be at different points along the path. But at Autism Empowerment, we're here to take that journey together and meet you along the way. We appreciate you hanging out with us and thank you for your time. You've been listening to the Autism Empowerment Podcast. If you'd like to get connected with our community, as well as all the great support and content we have planned for the future, please hit the subscribe button and visit www.autismempowermentpodcast.org 
for show notes, transcripts, social media details, Spectrum Life magazine, and more. As a 501c3 nonprofit charity, we rely upon support from listeners like you to produce our podcast and other programs. We appreciate you leaving a positive review, sharing us with your friends, and considering a tax-deductible donation today. Thank you again.